This is an HP N40L micro server. I bought this about two, a little over two years ago on eBay for under a hundred dollars. And I've been using it as my network storage device. And it's been pretty solid. I haven't had any real problems with it, but it's starting to show its age. It only supports SATA 2. It does not support SATA 3. Apparently the hardware does support SATA 3 and there are enthusiasts for this particular device that have created custom BIOSes that will enable SATA 3. I haven't been able to get any of those to work and I don't really want to brick the device. And the other major problem with it is that it does not support hardware encryption. It has an AMD Turon 2 Neo processor which doesn't have any AES instructions and it's soldered directly to the board so you can't replace it. And this start and I started to run into issues with this chip with higher capacity drives. I'm using 12 and 14 and even 18 terabyte drives. And when you use full disk encryption with drives of this size, it can take three to seven days to do a full disk copy. I looked at upgrading to one of the other HP microservers. The 10th Gen Plus has a socketed Intel chip, which means that you can upgrade it, but it uses an external power brick. So there is a limit to the type of processor you can put in. And rather than getting another device that's $600, I decided that I might as well just build my own. That way I can use standard parts and it'll be easier to upgrade in the future. So this is my new NAS, or at least all the parts for it. I'm using a Silverstone DS3 case and I'm using a LSI SATA adapter. There are only four SATA ports on the motherboard itself. This particular card has eight SATA ports on it. They're combined into these two SAS headers that you can break out with these cables. I'm using an AMD Ryzen 3 3200G processor that has built-in graphics so I don't need a separate graphic adapter which is good because there's only one PCI slot on the motherboard. The motherboard is just a standard AM4 board that has an A320i chipset in it. It has 16 gigs of RAM, a 500 watt power supply, and a Noctua fan to keep it nice and quiet. For the operating system hard drive, I'm using this 128 gig M2 SATA SSD that I have left over from a laptop upgrade I did a few years ago. Now some thoughts about the case. The front of this case is solid metal. It clips firmly on. It's pretty nice. As far as getting into the case, only one of the two sides comes off. The back part of this case does not come off. It's riveted on and so it makes it really difficult to get the motherboard in. It's a pretty tight design so you want to build into this and hopefully just set it up and not have to touch it again. When I put in the power supply I accidentally put it in upside down. Yes it does matter because there's a fan on one side and the top of the case has a fan grate with a cool little magnetic dust protector on it. Fortunately it wasn't too hard to flip the power supply around even with everything connected. I was able to pull it out and put it back in and screw it back in. At first I didn't think that this drive cage would actually fit back into the case because it wasn't clearing the SATA card, but it turns out that the drive cage has this removable bracket on it. It's designed so that you could put in a full video card and it will just take up a slot. The SATA adapter doesn't take up the full slot and I could probably fit a drive back in, but this side bracket also contains half of the rail. So it's actually really hard to get a drive in without that other rail there. The cage that all the drives are held into actually has two fan headers. You can put plug fan, the case fans directly into this, but my motherboard has four fan headers on it. So I didn't really need to use these. So I went ahead and installed all these parts and decided to power it on. Yep, everything looks good. We can see all the fans. Here it's only reading eight gigs of RAM. That's because the second chip got unseated. I was able to open the case back up and push it back in and all 16 gigs registered. I'm using Alpine Linux on this box. It's a really small, easy to use Linux distribution, bare bones, but it has all the packages I need. And with ZFS snapshots using the hardware AES encryption, uh, just take a look at the difference. I mean, I'm on my old box, I was maxing out the CPUs trying to copy encrypted data. And on this box, it's, it's barely even breaking a sweat, holding about 25% of all four CPU cores. A backup that would take seven or eight days on the HP takes less than one night usually just one night and a couple hours. So this is gonna be my new file server going forward. I'm pretty happy with it. It's built with standard parts. It's fully upgradable, has a very small footprint. It's pretty quiet, even with the three case fans that come with it. And hopefully it'll be my device for years to come. If you like this video, check out my other blog posts on battlepenguin.com or my other videos on battlepenguin.video. Support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee.